to tell you the truth, I, I've only gone up to 50 once. Uh, most of the time I stick on a low, lower setting, like a 10. Um, sometimes I'll go up to 25. Um, but if I go up to 25, I lower this to about 45. That's 26. There we go. I lower that to about, about 45. Um, and if I use the texture anti-aliasing, if you check recompute subrays, your render times are going to be increased. And same thing if you check regular subpixel sampling. Um, what you want to do, especially if you're using water and it goes off into the distance infinitely, uncheck regular subpixel sampling. Um, it'll be less pixely along the horizon. Um, also, you might want to uncheck recompute subrays. Um, I'm not entirely sure if, if it's this one or this one. That would do it. One of them, you just have to play with it. One of them will actually create the atmosphere uh, or the horizon on the water line to be very pixely because it's trying to um, actually, you know what is regular subpixel sampling. Uncheck that if you're using water. And it goes on infinitely. And then, and then uh, keep these same, same rules apply for this. Keep this at default and then just raise this to wherever you want it. And you can actually raise this uh, texels per ray right here a little bit higher than you can the sub rays per pixel and still keep a good decent amount of render time um, but of course lower this about 45 and you should be set to go so if we were going to use the render settings that I have right here right now actually no I'm going to lower these to about 30 and then I'm going to say okay well, I'm going to raise this to a 33 as well keep it on optimized keep it at automatic everything like this set the same and then for um, the advanced effects quality right here uh, you really don't have to go above 46 percent I used to do it at 100 percent and it was stupid I just noticed how long my render times were going so I learned from my mistakes um, I'll probably go up to 60 every now and then but you really don't have to go above 46 percent you really don't have to um, if you go into the photons right here keep these the same unless you exactly know what you want here I'm not gonna get into it because I honestly haven't played with this too much um, keep them all the same even the ultra setting keeps these the same it just raises the volumetrics quality booster right here is all it really does um, that I have seen so far so don't worry about that too much let me go ahead and click OK and then I'm gonna go ahead and render out the scene and we're doing it at 1600 by 900 so this is going to take quite a bit of time. Alright, as you can see here, it took about 16 minutes to render out this scene. Uh, and that's with the user defined settings and you know there's not much to it. 16 minutes isn't that long um, considering that if we had it on the smaller setting, maybe the, uh, let's see, let's go back to the resolution sizes here. Now what we had it set at um, was 799 by something. Um, and it took two minutes to render it at that size with the quality boost and final settings. So 16 minutes for 1600 by 900 isn't all that bad, um, considering that the detail for it was actually pretty good. So um, if we take that, that render setting that we had before and apply the settings we have now, it'd probably take just as long for that smaller render size. Uh, and that's not good. It's a smaller render size, and people want their renders to be on a higher resolution. So that's pretty good right there, I would consider. Another thing you want to look at, another thing that could easily optimize your render time and increase the speeds, and I probably should have did this before, was optimize last render pass. You have that checked, and it would almost double the speed of your render. Um, and you won't notice hardly any um, degrading quality in your render at all. Um, another thing that you want to check is if you don't have depth of field or you're not using it, uncheck it because that will be meaningless um, and it'll just increase render times. Also, if you don't have any blur transparencies or reflections, uncheck those. And if you don't want your soft, you don't want your shadows to be soft, uncheck that. Um, but usually, you want your shadows to be a little bit soft, and I always keep that checked. Um, you want to keep these almost by default checked all the time. Um, down here, let's see, you don't have to have any of these checked if you're not going to use them. You don't need to compute physically accurate caustics if you're not using water. 
Um, of course, you could check that. And it doesn't always affect water. Um, you can check that. It'll just let your image burn, I guess. Um, but you don't need those checked if you're not yearning, going to use them. And another thing is DPI. If you raise this to be really high, it's going to take longer to render as well. Um, probably you won't, probably won't be that much longer, but it'll it'll it definitely has an effect on the render. I always raise mine to 240. If you're going to print off the picture, the DPI is usually good to set at a higher level. Uh, but if you don't want to print it, you can keep it at 72. That's perfectly fine. Uh, another thing is is resolution size. The higher, the longer it's going to take. The lower, the smaller, it's not going to take nearly as long. Um, but if you wanted a high resolution, then just follow the steps I had in here. You should be just fine. So what I've done is I've actually put together a quick list, um, just a check off list, and you can copy it down. Or if you don't want to, and you think I'm talking a bunch of steam, then don't bother. Um, but I'm going to show it to you real fast. Okay, let's see here. All right. So right here is I just put the steps in order from 1 to 10. These are the 10 steps. They're more like guidelines. You don't have to follow them, but if you want to, they're here. Uh, first, you use standard trains for close-up ecosystems or just close-up terrains, and you don't need a lot of detail in general. Raise smallest feature in the function editor for, or for far-off procedural landscapes. Uh, they don't need that much detail because you're not going to be right up to see it anyways. Raise quality boost settings in Atmo tab, Atmosphere tab, only if needed. Never go higher than what is required. Um, that'll just save you a lot of heartache, uh, not heartache, but headache and um, patience. Uh, use user defined render settings. Um, I should put in right here uh, at the end that it's okay to use the final render setting, that's perfectly fine. Uh, you don't have to use user defined render settings. Uh, the final render preset is just fine as well. Um, if render size is above 1920 by 1080, keep subray per pixel minimum and maximum at low levels, then raise quality threshold. If it's smaller than 1920 by 1080, keep minimum at default, then raise maximum. Um, if the maximum value is above 30, lower the quality threshold. And this is kind of obscure. This is kind of what works well on my computer. Of course, my computer is not the same as everybody's. So this, I could set at the end of this, um, or whatever you feel comfortable with. I mean, if you raise it above 50, then that's fine, and then you might want to start thinking about lowering the quality threshold. Or if you raise it above 12, then it's just obscure. That's for my computer setting. Um, of course, that'll change. Repeat 5 and 6 for textured anti-aliasing. That's what the AA stands for. Um, keep quality sliders set to 46. Try not to raise past 50, and that's this slider right here, the advanced effects quality. Uh, keep that at 46 you really don't need to raise it higher you can if you want but you really don't have to so um, just keep that in mind uh, double check the atmosphere settings before final render and then save the file before rendering and don't be afraid to use the user settings what I should also put in here is before you do a full render at the resolution that you have um, do a a small area render and I'll show you how to do that what you do is right here it'll say select render area just left click and drag from one area to another and kinda just render off a little area of the scene and then that way you can check whether you need more anti-aliasing um, or you have to fix the lighting or anything and then you will save yourself you know half hour to a couple hours maybe even a day on your render if you just render out a small little area at first. And that's another thing you might want to try doing. That way if you have the um, let me go back here. That way if you have uh, these settings too low and you need to raise them or maybe they're too high and you're not noticing any difference you can lower them. Um, that's one thing you can try doing. That way you can check the anti-aliasing and um, make sure everything is looking peachy that way. That's a good practice to get into. I always do a small render area on areas that I think are going to be troubled areas, like right here where this shadow is really dark, um, or maybe this really high point right here might need more anti-aliasing, or maybe this smooth area right here is not as smooth as I want it to be and needs more anti-aliasing. I would do small renders like that before I do a huge full screen render. So. 
Um, other than that, these are just guidelines. You don't have to copy them. Uh, you can do whatever you want, of course, but this is just to help you with your render setting. It will also increase the atmosphere quality for those who have troubles with the grainy atmospheres. Um, and one more thing, or maybe a couple more things before I end this tutorial, is with those grainy atmospheres. If you don't want the grain and you don't really need it, uncheck volumetric with sunlight, just put it on projected shadows on clouds, and uncheck god rays. But if you want god rays, check it. Check god rays. Don't use volumetric sunlight, check god rays. And then raise the quality boost. Only to where you need it though. Um, but if you don't want the god rays or anything like that, just use projected shadows on clouds. Um, that way you still get a realistic looking render. And this doesn't really increase render times that much. And then uncheck god rays. And if god rays isn't checked, then don't worry about it. Another thing is, is in your sun tab, right here, or your light editor, if you go to volumetric, um, of course, you if you uncheck volumetric lighting, that's going to change it in the atmosphere tab as well. But if you have lens flare enabled, disable it. The lens flare will create more grain, um, more than what you would probably want. And then if you uncheck that, then um, that'll work for you. You can also go to shadows, and most of the time the shadows will be set to 100. Lower the shadows at least to 90. Um, I would go lower personally. Sometimes I go down to 70. Um, even that might be too much in, so, in most cases. And then raise um, the softness quality. Just a little bit. You don't need a lot. Um, I usually keep it at 0.5 or 1. And 1 is kind of pushing it for me. So um, that's what you should do there with if you have grain in the atmosphere as well. Um, let me make sure everything here. Yeah, it looks like that's all you would really have to worry about for that grainy atmosphere. Um, and I hope that you know you're not so afraid of the user settings. It's really quite helpful and and can create your renders to look absolutely gorgeous and and minimal amount of time. Whereas the presets is what people usually use, and those take forever, of course. So you know, I hope it helped you. I hope this tutorial has helped you as much as you know playing with view for hundreds of hours and um, learning all I have to know inside the user settings it's took in some ex uh, some you know experimentation and I finally got it to where I like it of course what works for me might not work for you but just kind of base off of what I told you here to help find what you need for yourself if that makes sense um, another thing you might want to do is check clear OpenGL data before rendering uh, that will help as well Alright, I am done here. I hope this tutorial has helped you. Uh, and if you do have any questions, please message me. Um, you can comment on the video if you're watching it on YouTube. If you downloaded it off of ViewTut's um, group page on DeviantArt, then you can definitely message me on DeviantArt as well. Thank you, and have a good day.